What's up America? Neil here and Kim from Jogger Farms Academy. We get asked a lot because we're parents and obviously parents that carry guns a lot about child safety and how we secure guns. So let's get into it. So one thing to remember is that every child is different and only you know your child and when they're ready for it. But uh, the best thing to do is as soon as they're ready is start talking about firearms and firearm safety. Yeah, so as a general rule of thumb, I mean, technically my kids are typically shooting physical guns like a 22 rifle uh, or a BB gun, however you want to do that at around five years old. Again, you're going to know your kid better than anybody, so maybe your child is ready before that or maybe take some time afterwards everyone's going to vary a little bit but typically that's that's the deal now that's the actual shooting of guns which i think is a very critical part to this because what we want to do other than educate the child is uh to take the curiosity i think that that's mm -hmm. i think that's the big problem is they, oh, yeah. like kids they want to get into something they see daddy's gun or whatever and they and that's when problems happen because somehow you failed in some process there and the kid got to the gun uh, and obviously we never want the child to ever get anywhere near that or have any anywhere that they could get to that gun, but uh, it's the real world and if something like that unfortunately would happen if they're not curious about it because they shot before, they shoot all the time, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, I don't think that's going to be a major issue. Uh, and we'll talk about precautions and what we do. Mm -hmm. We put a video out there and we'll, we'll put links to that as well uh, as far as, as that. Now, we have a, a, a two-year-old, mm -hmm. okay? Obviously, mentally, she is not going to understand gun safety. She does know what a pew 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 is, all right, because she obviously, this is what I do for a living. We're I'm instructors, and she comes to the range and indoors and outdoors and sees daddy at work, and daddy carries a gun every day, so does, so does mom. Uh, depending on what my job is, I, sometimes I'm going to be carrying openly, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and it's not a, it's just a normal, like I wear a belt and I wear shoes. That's right. Uh, so uh, when I say she understands, pup she knows that it's a gun, and we have no toy guns. No. None. Uh, it's not something that we encourage them to play with, uh, but she just understands that that is something. And so the whole point of that is, is that's going to eventually grow, mm -hmm. right, into a conversation when she's obviously no longer two years old and can mentally, uh, you know, decipher safety and what to do. Right. And that's right. And also that takes away the fear because it's not something that just all of a sudden happens. You know, she's grown up with it. And so. Right. And used to it. I'm sure you know we have a range in our backyard so <laughs> she can hear the sounds and sometimes she'll say, I heard you pew pew pew. And then, you know, it's, it's about all she knows, <laughs> which is fine. So one of the first things you do when you do start talking about firearms. Is trigger control? No, I'm kidding. Is letting them know if they ever do see a, a firearm that they need to tell an adult. It's not something that they should touch or even though they know how to handle it and they know the rules, it's something you go tell an adult when you see one. Yeah, and, and this conversation, again, we're not here to teach on a parent, just our take on this is that this should not be like this uber serious, something's weird conversation. It's something that you're going to have multiple, multiple, multiple mm -hmm. times. Just like uh, when they get older, you're talking about smoking or drugs or whatever, alcohol. Same concept here. We, we're just kind of Bring this up on a continual basis so that they understand that guns can, can be dangerous and we don't touch They're them. They're not toys. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And then here's the other thing. No matter what, we're talking about our kids in this example, but that's a small part of it because I would hope that everyone's kids has friends and they come over to your house and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so most of our precautions when we start talking about that is for them. It's not for our kids because, again, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a video on our older kids, but at this point, it's pretty, our oldest is 11 years old. I mean, they're not going to, if I left a, a, a fake gun that looked real out here, they're not going to do anything with it. But if you think that's going to be interesting, maybe we'll throw up a hidden camera yeah. and put a gun out there, a fake one. Uh, but anyway, it's keeping those other kids out because I, we can't, I have no idea what kind of education that, that they had or what they think of guns. And so it's, uh, it's pretty important that, that uh, we have these precautions for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. As far as that goes, you want to you want to talk a little bit about what what we do? Yeah, we. Um, one thing, if you watched our video um, showing our room door, where we actually have the the key padlock. Yeah, so it's a digital. It's just a digital lock, and you yeah. put a combination in, and it unlocks. 
and it, it automatically mm -hmm. locks it, it automatically when the door is unlocked it will lock again in 30 seconds no matter what the whole purpose of that is just to keep kids out yeah no, no i mean my children do not know the codes to the room never mm -hmm. uh, nobody knows it except for kim and i and they never will. Uh, Some people say, well, they can know your, your, your key pad for your phone. It's like, well, that's not something I ever do in front of them. If they're around, I'm turning my back. I, in front of the little one, I never put it in where she can see it. Even though she's only two, I don't want her to see. Yeah, she's see smart enough to figure it out, I no doubt. Other than our little one for being changed or something, when's the last time our kids were in our room? You don't want them in our room? I mean, it's just something that we don't do. I, ever since the kids were small enough to understand that and old enough not to, to, to you know, to not to come into rooms, I, they've never been allowed in our bedroom. It's just, I mean, our rule, and there's no... But again, everybody's different. Uh, so anyway, the, the whole point of this is that door lock keeps them out of the room. So that's one level. And then once they're in the room, it doesn't mean I have guns strewn about the room. Uh, they're also going to be put up, our home defense guns are going to be put up in a location where it's physically impossible. Unless they can fly, there's no ladders, chairs, they can't crawl up on anything. There's no physical way that they could get there. You'd have to be at least five, eight to reach up there and get it, okay? Uh, so what's the big deal about that? Well, you, you can you can store guns as safely as you want, but there's always the scale. I have to be able to get to this when I need it. I always use this analogy. You can have three vaults, uh, one for ammo, one for empty magazines, one for unloaded guns, but there's no chance you're ever going to get to that thing if you ever needed it. You've got to find a happy medium that works for you. And so for us, that's, that's kind of the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, all the guns, and for me, if you have a, like one of those big heavy vaults or whatever, those are great for gun storage, but for me, that's not good for getting my gun out in time. Trying to work a combination or a keypad, uh, I think, is, is kind of silly. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to get that thing pretty quick if I need it. And so that's, my, that's, my, that's our process. Mm -hmm. uh, again, so they have to get through an automatically locked door, and then they have to be able to fly. Okay? <laughs> and so that, not to mention, there's, there's a closet door, which we could also lock which we do, uh, especially if we have parties or kids are coming over or something like that. So then they'd have to actually get to a regular key lock uh, to get through that, so. Yeah, and I think it also changes too, if you had teenagers, you know, once you start getting older kids, then you might want to put even more precautions, but sure. as for like school-aged children, it's a little different. Yeah, no, I, I and again, I, I think your children. That, yeah, and, and, and when you <laughs> and get to a teenage and, yeah. age, I think that your children should play a part of the prevention as well, I mean. Why would they take kids into our, your room where they're prohibited from going anyway? That's kind of... Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's that's either here nor there. So the, the point is, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever system you have, that's fine. But this is what we do. We have an automatic locked door, and they're too high for anybody to get to. And the conversation with kids is very, very important. From the youngest age possible, mm -hmm. and don't make it a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, just a, it's just a continual conversation about this over and over uh, until they get it. And as they get older, you'll have more options. And the sooner you can get them shooting and enjoying it, I think the better off you're going to be all the way around. Yeah, I think if you make it an open thing, you know, our kids know if they want to see a gun or if they want to shoot, they just ask. And so it's not like something where if they, like we said, if they found one or, you know, if they want to shoot it, they, it's not like, oh, I, I need to sneak it away. I can just ask and I can use it, you know, with our permission and us watching. And there's a lot of dangerous things in your house. I mean, how many times has your kid said, hey, let's go see your toaster? <laughs> or let's go, uh, hey, you got any of that bleach around? Or, hey, dad, let's go play with a chainsaw. I mean, I, they can become common things, and it's not that big a deal once they have an, an awareness of it and they've used it or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the two-year-old's not so good with the chainsaw yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? One fun thing we do uh, with the kids often is just like we're sitting at dinner and we're like, tell us the rules of gun safety. Uh, just to keep it like going and them always thinking about it. It's kind of fun thing we do with the younger kids. Yeah. They like that. Making it fun and having it somewhat, I don't know if say entertaining, but yeah, a little bit. They're kids, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the more that you play along with this process, uh, the better off you're going to be. For example, too, just on a side note, like if you have a, hopefully you have some type of, of safety plan in your house in case something goes badly we've talked about this we've got plenty of videos on there uh, about having a safe room that the, everybody goes to in case there's a home invasion i think mean, practice that you don't think make it a big deal the kids like to run around go to the hey code red everybody knows to go to their their room and you know they run around upstairs and heck silly and whatever but at some point by doing that over and over and over 
if need be, and your kids are going to know when it's like, I'm dead serious now and it's a big deal, and we're just having fun. Mm -hmm. But the process, just like dry fire practice uh, with those interactive laser targets and stuff like that, people are learning to shoot, whether you realize that or not. I mean, you're learning things, and it's just a fun way of doing it. So, And we're constantly updating the website. But one of the things that I've been doing a lot of is uh, kind of safe family safety training classes. Uh, with and without shooting, too, with them both. Yeah. And, without light fire, sorry. Yeah, and so and a lot of that can be just uh, people have me come over to their house. We talk about some, some I give them some uh, tips on how you could store guns based on your actual house and your layout. Uh, but most importantly, talking to the whole family about having a plan that they can put together like I said, for the safe, key, uh, safe room and stuff like that, and having that open discussion and dialogue with the children that are there that are obviously old enough to understand that. So that's another, another thing that we, uh, we do a lot of. So if, even if you're not near us, look for other training academies. A lot of people do yeah. similar classes like that. And honestly, you know, Patreon and things like this, now we can even do a lot of this stuff remotely because it's not like a firearms class. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically, let's talk about how your house is laid out. What is your lifestyle like? You know, Do you have one story, two stories, where are the kids, how old are they, these types of things, and they don't necessarily have to be physically there all the time uh, to, to set that up, and kind of like a consultation type of deal. That's all I got anyway. What else? That's Anything? it, yeah. All right, guys, well, I hope you learned something from this, uh, from this video. Uh, we get a lot of questions asked a lot about that when it comes to guns and kids, so all the premium content goes to Patreon, so you can check us out on Patreon. We put uh, all kinds of good stuff on there, a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and, and YouTube. And until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.